accept that's okay is that good everyone get that except thank you very much okay well welcome everybody good afternoon thank you for joining us on a saturday afternoon nice to see all of you here uh, today we're going to talk about a project that we've been working on in our team for quite a long time now almost uh, many years actually so uh, we're going to talk about how we wanted to improve autonomous learning at our university with the end project of a language learning database so we're going to talk to you about some details with that project now. So let me just give you a quick rundown of the presentation today. So first, we're going to explain uh, why we do autonomous learning at our university based on the background of assurances of learning, which we'll explain first. And then we'll move on to explain autonomous learning and how we facilitate it. What do we do in regards to making students become independent learners at our university? And then um, the, the next thing we'll do, the third part of our project, is how we created this uh, website, this language learning database, which was, the which was the result of a faculty initiative project. We'll explain that a little bit more detail. And then finally, we will explain uh, the results of a survey that we gave to students based on their feedback. So how did they like the website they used based on learning language strategies? And we'll talk about some um, moving forward and thoughts about the future with this project and what we can do uh, for further research and improvements. So um, before we start, though, I would just like to introduce my team members. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome. Thanks Hello. for coming. Oh, there you guys are. Hey, nice to see you. you're all looking wonderful today. So this project and the success that we've had would be absolutely impossible without everyone's awesome support and encouragement throughout the past couple of years. So we've all been working very hard on this project and it's a very uh, personal and important to us. So we're very proud to share with you the results of our projects and thank you so much for joining us. So first I'd like to hand it over to uh, Michael and Matt who will talk, talk to you guys about the assurances of learning at our university. So without further ado, you guys can go ahead and take it away. Go ahead. Thank you, Ben. Um, before we begin uh, talking, uh, we would like to just ask everyone here, if in your language program or school, do you have any program quality assurance initiatives? Uh, do you make breakout rooms for this? Three or? No, please. Okay, I can set that up. Okay. So if we could put that question in the chat box. We'll just have a little mini discussion. Um, do you have any of kind of assurances of learning initiatives in your university? And this, for example, this could be something as simple as um, like, what was it? Uh, faculty development meetings before, after semester, things like that. So let me set up the breakout rooms if that's okay. Sure. okay. Oh, thank you for sharing the question in the chat box. That's great. Okay. Okay, one moment. I'm going to make three rooms, about three or four people in each room. Quality assurance. Wow. Things like, uh, for example, even, even a standardized outside test might be something that you use to check how things are going but there's lots of different ways. Yeah, and receiving students, uh, class evaluation could be one, mm -hmm. surveys, another one. Okay, yes. so is four minutes sound like a good enough time? Let's do a quick little discussion. How do you guys try to improve your programs at your universities or institutions? Sounds good. All right. I'll, I think we got someone who just joined us, so I will put the question in the chat box again. Welcome. Okay, we create the breakout rooms again. Sorry about that. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, just for the people from our team uh, who were in rooms, was there anything that um, popped up that you want to share, or should we move on? Ready to go. Let's move on. 
sounds good. <laughs> okay. So, Michael, please. Yeah. Um, we can go to the next slide then. Um, thank you, everyone, again. We are from APU, located in Beppu, Oita. A unique fact about APU is that both students and faculty come from around the world. We have maintained nearly 50-50 ratio in terms of diversity, currently representing students from 95 countries and regions. 90% of subjects at APU are offered in both English and Japanese. We serve our English learners at the Center for Language Education, where students are mostly domestic, learn English intensively over one to two years. One of the three major goals of the English program is to develop the ability to set and achieve goals in English, thus ultimately leading learners toward autonomy. We could argue that this goal is to nurture autonomous learners who will continue to work on enhancing their language abilities. Learner autonomy, as you may know, is defined by Holek as the ability to take charge of one's own learning. And Benson was a key figure in our field who reviewed and connected theory and practice of autonomy in language teaching and learning. The university has focused on various accreditations and quality assurance practices for the past several years. And our English program also has our assurance of learning goals. Assurance of learning is, in short, the process of evaluating how well a school accomplishes its educational goals. Based on the university's mission, we identified our program goals, which Matt will show in the next slide. Yes, okay, so several years ago, the director of English, uh, James Blackwell at our school, plan to establish um, assurance of learning. And we started with a uh, mission and three learning goals. Um, and you can see you can see those here. The first learning goal is basically, you know, what you'd expect from any uh, language program, which is to teach the, you know, reading, writing, listening, speaking, as well as grammar and vocabulary. But the little asterisk says that where the goal is to get academic competence in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, learning goal two is, uh, well, as Michael mentioned, it's a very multicultural context at APU. So um, the second learning goal is how to communicate effectively in a multicultural context or to work effectively in those um, fields. So that's our second goal. But our third goal, and the next slide, um, it, we, if we focus on the third goal, this was our kind of um, like, this our, our task was to implement learning goal three into the program itself. And learning goal three, as Michael mentioned, was to create independent learners, lifelong independent learners, people that um, would use resources even after they leave APU and we'd train them to be able to continue their education in English on their own. Um, to give a quick picture of what we're talking about, um, we're gonna we're gonna explain a little bit of how uh, we implemented learning goals in each of our levels. But to, to understand the levels, here they are. <laughs> There's four levels to our standard track, and um, students place into these levels using the Pearson levels test. Um, and these suffer bands are the exit goals for each of the levels. So by the end of upper intermediate, we hope we have U1 plus students who are then um, free of their English credits. Uh, so yeah, so then we actually, yeah, now we can have a look at some of the actual original uh, study plans and um, how we wanted to implement LT3 in our program at the start. Right, here's an example from elementary level class. The worksheet encouraged students to reflect on their current English proficiency, proficiency level and weaknesses and set, set a target using the Pearson Global Scale of English Scores from a test called Progress Test. The test provides students with a list of can-do statements that they should work on. 
So students would identify which can do they, uh, they want to uh, work on during the semester. Um, next shows the pre-intermediate level. In pre-intermediate, um, it, it was quite controlled. Students would get a long list of skills they could try to practice. Um, and tasks for each skill. So they would, um, for example, in this case, uh, you can see some of the speaking tasks and it was to um, you know, sing a song in English uh, or talk to Siri uh, in English for two minutes and record it. Um, and then they would then upload those files or that work to OneNote and the teacher could quickly either eyeball it or, or try and give uh, some extra feedback. It was a little time intensive for teachers, but it worked, it seemed to work quite well. And in intermediate level, uh, on the next slide, students would decide on what skills to work on. I think, could you show us? It's something? showing here, it's showing on our screen, I think. Okay, thank you. So yeah. in intermediate level, students would decide on which skills to work on, but report their progress by submitting their notebook as a proof for teachers to spot check. Typically, students might work on vocabulary study, reading news articles, watching movies or TED Talks, and write a summary or reaction, or work on IELTS preparations. So then in upper intermediate, this is the, the highest level in the standard track, um, students would use a recent test score. In this case, it was the TOEFL ITP um, back when we were using that. And um, they would look at the test score and then decide which skill needed the most help and what percentage of time they would devote to that, to studying that skill. And then they would go and find resources and report back on their progress. Um, so this is actually much closer to what we've ended up with um, these days. But uh, yeah, this was kind of our initial, so those were the four initial plans um, in our program. Right, and this graph summarizes the flow of our project. Our planning started in 2018. We incorporated independent learning in each level of the program and held the student and teacher surveys in spring 2019. Based on the, the input, we revised the study plan system for 2020. And what emerged from the surveys and other feedback included things like students not knowing actually how to effectively work on their weaknesses, which suggested that perhaps students may benefit from a list of language learning strategies to choose from. And there were other things as well, like uh, we found that teachers were spending various amounts of time uh, checking students' work, and there was uh, some uh, level of uh, lack of consistency among the different levels of the program. Yeah, yep. Matt, would you like to add something? Well, no, no, just that, that yeah, that was exactly it. It just, it, it, it worked to an extent, but it was just, yeah, too inconsistent um, for uh, the amount of work that teachers were doing, like you said, and, and students were, um, they would move to a new level and not really be able to carry with them the skills they sort of learned in the earlier ones. Um, yeah. So uh, then on to autonomous learning in section two. Hey. Thank you, Tomoko. Hey. Oh, thank you, Matt. And this section deal with autonomous learning. But I like to begin this section with a discussion because now, uh, the participants here are interested in how to cultivate learner autonomy among students. So first of all, first before my part, I would like to learn from you about your smart practices at the practices at your institution, okay? So now uh, you'll be sent to a breakout room and each group might have two or three three participants, including us, and also please have discussions about the topics here. Okay, please let me share the topics in the chat box. Uh, Tomoko, sorry, I had a quick question. So we don't have like a, a very, very large audience. Oh, so what do you think about having a, just a group discussion in the main room for a few minutes? Okay, that would be nice. Thanks, Ben. Okay, so let's have a discussion here. 
and then so can we take notes or prop sure. we will share the jump board yep please. i can do that and then yeah if possible i would like you to speak freely but yeah actually we don't have lots of time for to ask everyone to talk so if possible you can also leave your practice practices on the jam board so now ben has shared the link in the chat box so everyone could you click on the link to share your ideas and also how in your institution if possible could you share how what practices you are employing to develop your student ability to learn by themselves so I'm just uh, sharing my screen very quickly to show you how you can uh, use the Jamboard. So you can click on this sticky note here and type your answer and just click submit and that's it. It's that easy. And then you can just share it on this main screen if that's okay. Um, ah, thank you. Ah, thank you for sharing it again. Okay. So the question is um, to the group again, sorry, Tomoko is, how do you promote, uh, if you promote autonomous learning, how do you do it? Um, but we can do a discussion in the main room because we have a small small group. So please feel free to unmute yourself and share what you do at your university. If you do anything at all. Can we call on people? Is that weird? <laughs> Zabina, do you want to share something? Do you do anything at your institution? Yeah, hello everyone. I'm teaching at Mesa University and I'm from Hungary, teaching English here. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a um, so-called language lounge, which is elective, so uh, elective, well, it's like a self-access thing. So they can, students can come and practice anytime they have free time, five, guest lecturers are providing two 90 minute slots each week. So it's nine, uh, no, sorry, 10 classes. Um, and students who attend give really good feedback about it that they can practice and uh, learn a lot, but it's not focused on any, like it, it, there's no textbook. Uh, the topics either emerge or we can um, just start discussion topics, but uh, it's rather like free discussion. That's one, and a colleague of mine did uh, like a winter group study for the winter break, and uh, it was also self-access, so people could just, uh, students could just um, um, decide to go and then go, and that was similar, playing games, um, discussions and things like that. That's what I thought of. So. That, that's thanks for, yeah, thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, have you had, opportunities to learn from students about their reactions or feedback about the programs? Yes, uh, I actually did an interview study <laughs> with students, not actually my topic was not um, related to, for example, language lounge, but they worded their um, uh, experiences. Uh, they really like and they look for opportunities to learn together, to um, have conversational practice and um, uh, opportunities to meet foreign teachers or, you know, generally to speak English. So I think it's very successful. At least that's what they say. The winter study group, I actually visited one or two sessions and it was, uh, again, students I seem to be very uh, relaxed and open and uh, and there was progress. Um, I also heard feedback about it that they liked it and they would like to have more of these um, like maybe one or two months um, long, um, I don't know, group oh, uh, the activities. Yeah, the classes sound really successful. So I want to learn from you more. So if possible, could you leave some more details on the jump board, if possible? Thank you. OK. And how about others? OK, so yeah, 
so if possible, again, uh, please leave your smart practices on the Jamboard. And I think the information on the Jamboard will be full of inspiring ideas if you leave some comment or some information. So we will keep the URL, the web page, uh, available for a moment for a while. So if you're interested, you can access the link later as well. Thank you very much. So now let me get back to our main point, which is uh, learner autonomy or autonomous learning. So in the project I'm talking about, or we are introducing you today, our final goal is to foster autonomous learners. So in order to achieve this goal, we develop a language learning strategy database based on our based on the result of result of existing research and also our need analysis. And now please let me talk about the our the result of our literature review and need analysis. First literature review. So who are autonomous learners or what kind what are the characteristics of autonomous learners? According to Hedge, autonomous learners have the ability to take responsibility for their own learning and to plan, organize, monitor the learning process independently of the teacher. So now, um, one of the goals of L2 education is to foster autonomous learners because learning L2 requires sustained effort of learners. So they are not supposed to learn from someone's help, someone else during their learning process. So they need the ability to learn by themselves. So here, the most in, important question is how we can develop, how learner autonomy can be developed. And so one of the answers to, uh, one of the answers to this question is instruction of language learning strategies. So language learning strategies, in short, LLS, are specific actions taken by the learners to make learning easier, faster, more enjoyable, more self-directed, more effective, and more transferable to new situations. And various research results indicate that the Learners' knowledge and the use of LLS support them to develop their ability to learn autonomously. For example, in Fartwell's research result, after learning uh, LLS, learners started to dismiss their old learning methods, such as work repetition, and started seeking for and trial new ones by themselves. And also another example is Pransky's meta-analysis. In his analysis of 77 preceding studies with about 8,000 participants, about two thirds of L2 learners in the experimental groups performed better than the average of the control groups. So um, these results shows that LLS or instruction of LLS have some good influence to develop uh, on the development of learner autonomy. Okay, so uh, LLS is supposed to help students to develop their ability to learn. So we decided to have a survey to gain information of our student LLS use. So uh, we use strategy inventory for language learning. So this is a questionnaire designed. This is one of the common questionnaire designed to assess the LLS uses of L2 learners. And this contains a list of 50 LLS used by good language learners collected by Oxford. And in the survey, the respondents are asked to, uh, asked to answer to what extent they use each LLS using Likert scales. And so this survey contains a list of 50 LLS. So by answering this survey, respondents are supposed to raise their awareness to LLS and also learn some new LLS by answering the questions. Then we conducted the LLS 
at our institution in 2019 with 154 respondents from the different course levels. And Japanese translation was also given. Next slide, please. Okay, and when we analyze the data gained from the SIL survey, we found a mismatch between uh, the statement in the SIL and student understanding of them. So here are the examples. Example number one. So in the SIL, the statement is, I physically act out new English words. However, the possible reaction of our student is, what does this mean? I physically act out new English words. <laughs> and the second example is, I try to find patterns in English, but probably our students were not sure about uh, how and when. And the third example is, I pay attention when someone is speaking English. Probably my, we, our student had the question, so what? And also first example is, I write down my feelings on language, but they might have asked why. Okay, so like this, the simple translation of SEAL does not convey enough information. So after analyzing the data, we get the conclusion that for the effective implementation of LLSI, language learning strategy instruction, we need more details. And also probably the skill-based framework appear to much of our student learning context. Because in our institution, as Michael and Matt said, we have already had the framework that students reflect on their learning uh, in our current curriculum. And second, we decided to assess what we are doing with LLS in the classroom, okay? So here, the table shows the four important steps of LLSI by Griffiths. And as Matt, ex Matt and Michael explained previously in our presentation, um, each level has one or more uh, activities which dealing with these different stages. For example, in the elementary level, we have teacher-led workshop about specific language skills like vocabulary or reading. And also we have a system to check student self-study using LLS. So students are asked to do their self-study using paper notebook or online notebook and share their study with the teachers for spot check and feedback. And also we have self-reflection worksheet to make opportunity for students to evaluate their study. And uh, we wanted to know how students and teachers perceived our, perceived our practices. So with the student, we had a survey. And in this survey, about 97% um, of students perceived explicit instruction, such as workshop, uh, positively they perceived uh, it was helpful for them to their, their ability to learn by themselves. And 90% of students found LLS practice helpful. And 89% agreed that they increased their repertoires of LLS through our LLSI. And with teachers, we had a survey and also group interview. And overall, they agreed that that LLSI was beneficial to our students. However, they had difficulties. So they felt they needed special experience and expertise to have workshop or give some feedback. And also they felt they need consensus among teachers on how to give feedback or co conduct workshop. And it was also time consuming because they have other content to teach in the English class. And also it required rigorous effort of teachers to check student work. So these perceptions explains Griffith's statement, why language classes currently pay little attention to LLS. Okay, so uh, to sum up, 
So according to our analysis, LLS or LSI were supposed to be beneficial to our student and welcomed by our student. However, for the effective implementation of LLSI, we need detailed instruction on how and why, for example, and also we require frameworks which map the learning context of our students. And also we need balance LLSI with other coursework. And most importantly, we need to consider teacher's workload. Then after our research, we decided to develop our language learning strategy database. So now Kiyu and Ben will be talking about how the database was developed and how it can be used in our program. Thank you so much, Tomoko-sensei. So now I'll be talking about the, our most recent project to develop the database website. Okay, so we did this project uh, through a faculty, through founding called Faculty Initiative Project, which is a year-long project supported by the university to improve the quality of teaching. So through this project, first, our goal is to identify useful language learning strategies for our students. And then after identifying the useful language learning strategies, we wanted to develop a language learning strategy database website that, can, that contain demonstration videos. So the reason why we decided to create a database website was because of the previous research and projects that we learned the importance of providing instruction to learn the language learning strategies, but also learned the challenges that teachers faced. So we wanted to create something that is accessible to all the students and teachers. And if we have the website, teachers who are not sure about what exactly to tell students can also um, tell students about the database and then students can access and learn them. Okay, also we decided to contain demonstration videos because of um, our previous experience. When we had the workshop and provided students with explicit instructions, students were able to learn the strategies better than when we simply gave them list of strategies. So they didn't know what to do if they only had a list. So we thought demonstration videos would be more useful. Okay. And as we talked about, we hope to cultivate lifelong independent learners of English. So I, as an English learner myself too, learned a lot of uh, strategies when I was studying English. And it was really helpful after I stopped studying English at university. Even after graduation, I was able to learn, like in my graduate school, if I had to read a lot of English articles, um, I used the strategies that I learned when I was learning English in university, and it was really helpful. So we hope that students can find ways that work for them and they can continue learn learning languages after graduation as well. Okay, so the first step of our project was to identify useful language learning strategies. So for this one, we held a faculty development workshop in December 2019 to introduce our project to the teachers and also elicit some suggestions from other teachers too. Of course, we have level coordinators in our group, but we thought it would be more beneficial if we get more feedback from other teachers too. Okay. So after we got some feedback from other teachers, we developed this um, spreadsheet which had clear explanation of each strategy in English and Japanese, and also an objective of each language learning strategy and some additional resources for the language learning strategies. And we share the uh, spreadsheet with the teachers, level coordinators, so that they can take a look and give us some suggestions, which one would be um, useful for their level, or if they had um, additional comments, they add some comments to the spreadsheet. Okay, so now Ben will be talking about the details of the website. Thank you very much, Kiyu. Can you guys hear me okay? Is the audio okay? All right, wonderful. Thanks. 
So uh, as Q mentioned, one of the biggest uh, aspects of our uh, LLS development project was this idea of demonstration videos because teachers don't have a lot of time during the semester to give detailed, explicit explanations of how to do an activity. So we were thinking as a team, okay, how can we do this in a way that can benefit students, but also be helpful for teachers? So we thought, why don't we make demonstration videos? So this part uh, of our project took quite a long time, um, but I'll explain why. But let me go through some of the background of what we did. So basically, we hired uh, students from our university uh, and they were hired as TAs or teaching assistants, but uh, they were working with us. So basically, we hired two teams, and these teams would develop videos for uh, each strategy that we indicated on the large list over on the, on the previous slide that Kia was talking about. So how did we do it? So basically, everyone on the team, including myself, we were allocated a specific skill. Uh, for example, Kiyu and I were working on the listening and speaking skill, and then we had our TA team. So the TA teams were supposed to be actors and script writers. And uh, the, us on the team were to, we, we were there to kind of guide them and offer them suggestions in their video ideas and their uh, script writing and answer any questions they had and things like that. So just to give you a little bit of background for our TAs, we wanted to include a international student and a Japanese uh, basis student in the, in the videos, because we thought um, students would be more interested in watching a demonstration video with their peers. Of course, our team could film the demonstrations ourselves, but who wants to watch that? Who wants to watch teachers acting out those um, demonstrations. So we thought, you know what, we should try to get students more interested and increase their motivation by actually having student actors. So that's what we did. Um, however, there were some challenges. This was all happening during oof, fall 2020. That was like, boom, that was the hot COVID time. So all of our communications were done by email. There were a lot of filming delays due to um, issues with the student scheduling and the final editor had some trouble making the final edits. So uh, it was a challenge, but in the end, we got the videos done, uploaded, and now they are on a website. So this semester uh, we gave the, or we kind of launched the website and we use this platform called Weebly. So I know nothing, zero, literally zero about web development and website making. But even this site was easy for all of us to use. Um, we basically built the website in about a month and a half or so. And um, yeah, it was very useful for us and easy to use, edit and modify, even for beginners like me and the team. So we launched that this semester. Uh, however, there were some challenges with the website. For example, we wanted students to have uh, dual language support. So many, many Japanese universities or Japanese websites have like an option at the top of the screen where you just click it and it says like English or Japanese and the whole website will switch from English or Japanese. So we wanted to give students the options for both, right? However, because there was no dual language support version in the free weebly.com uh, web service, we had to just have an English version and then a Japanese translation right underneath. So although it looks a little well, it looks okay. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, still, we, we would have preferred to have either one page was all in Japanese, and then you click on a button, and then the page turns into English. But we worked with what we had. So everyone, do we still have people? <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at the website uh, together. Uh, it's called elsdatabase.weebly.com. So I will share the link in the chat box with you afterwards. But first, let me show you uh, how it went. One moment, please. Okay, so imagine you're a student and you're on your university's homepage or your English teacher's homepage and you click on this link. And this is what you're gonna see right here. So, oh, okay, the APU English Learning Strategy Database, okay? So right away, it's very simple. There's not a lot of tabs. It's just homepage. 
on the home page, it says, oh, what English skills do you want to improve? And you'll see, oh, there's a speaking section, a writing section, reading, listening, grammar, vocabulary, benchmark test skills. And benchmark is like our university standardized test that we often use. Um, instead of like TOEFL or IELTS, we use this um, for our university. And finally, a section, a student favorite, improving your English with Netflix or YouTube. So just, just to give you a brief example now, um, of course, I will share this link in the chat box later, but let's take a look. So if I'm a student and hmm, I want to improve my writing, click on writing. So it takes you to a page. What writing skills do you want to improve? So you'll see there's an English uh, objective and there's a Japanese objective, English objective and a Japanese objective. So students can, there's no confusion about um, what the strategy is and what this what the goal is for the for this skill. So let's let's say we want to improve our listening and writing ability. So click on that link, and it'll take you to a strategy site. And so here again we have the steps in English. And as I told you, um, we had to translate the steps in right underneath and put those in Japanese. As I told you, the um, TAs were able to film uh, demonstration videos for us, but not for every single strategy, because some strategies lended themselves better to video demonstrations than others. So not everyone that we have available has a video, but this one does. So I just want to give you um, just a little quick demo of what some of the videos looked like in general. So this is a transcribing skill. Let me play this for you. So the student comes in, sits down. Okay, so today I've got to listen and transcribe. So there's going to be like um, sometimes a strategy will pop or like a, a step will pop up first. And it'll be in English and in Japanese. Sometimes there'll be like hints as well. Like uh, what was it? If you have like a squiggly line, that means it's the wrong spelling. So please confirm the spelling. And it, so it shows the student using like a shared screen and how they uh, practice the point, the strategy. And yeah, I don't want to go through everything because we kind of have a limited amount of time but to have clear space and to have very few possessions so we just we wanted students to have an opportunity to actually see how a strategy is done and these demonstration videos were one way that you can do it uh just to give you another example of a of a strategy that does not have a video we can go to um maybe reading um translated text for accurate understanding. So there's this, a simpler explanation. So it's just, there's no video. It just tells you what to do, how to do it. Um, another one could be, I don't know, listening, uh, listening for the gist. So again, there's some strategies for how to practice it. Again, it shows the objective and the explanation in English and in Japanese, some tips at the bottom. And sometimes we even will have an area for additional resources for students to continue the practicing the skill, but using it in external websites such as BBC, um, ESL podcasts, or a famous one that most people know about, ELO, which is developed by one of our colleagues for extra listening and transcribing practice. Okay, so that's the website. Um, very proud of it. We spent a lot of time making it. Uh, it's still it's still in the process of being modified because we we plan to use it every semester. But this was the first iteration launched this semester. Thank you for checking it out. Let me put the link in the chat box for you uh, if you have any interest. Oops, is that going to work? That's not a link. Though. Okay. Well, I'll put it in a little bit later. Okay. Let me go back to our presentation, please. Thank you very much for checking out the website with me. Okay. Back 
back to the presentation, sorry. I have many screens open, sorry. Okay, here we are back at the website. So we did this the first, um, ah, thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Matt, for sharing the link, <laughs> the correct one. So like I said, we gave this out for the first time this semester. We had students maybe trial it for about five or six weeks, five or six weeks now, I think. So we wanted to get their feedback on it. Is it actually helping them? Are they using the website? Uh, are there going to be uh, changes that we need to make in the future? What can we do to improve it? What do students think? So from now, I'm going to hand it over to Lucas, who's going to talk a little bit about the website survey and the results uh, from students' feedback and their opinions. So Lucas, go ahead and take it away when you're ready. All right. Thank you, Ben. I'm ready now. Um, yeah, so as, as Ben mentioned, we introduced the website to students at the beginning of this semester, which was actually about a month ago. And then we gave them a survey a few weeks later. So students have not had much time to use it, but we wanted to gauge their initial impression so that we, we can make improvements as, as they are needed going forward. And in, in the survey, the first question was just asking them, have they seen the survey? Um, it was not required in our courses, so many students ha have not seen it yet. But 119 students responded that yes, they had seen the survey. And then we asked them how were they introduced to it? And the vast majority were introduced to it by their class teachers, um, which is great. But of course, we'd like to provide different ways to introduce this website to our students going forward. And I'll talk about that a little more at the end. Um, oh, back one, Ben. Um, so the next question asked, if, they, if they'd seen the website, well, had they used it? And um, if students answered no, again, their survey ended, but if they had used the website, then we asked them a series of questions. And let's take a look at their replies now. So the first question was asking, um, what skill was the focus of their independent learning plan? Um, so at the top, you see Q1 study plan. That's the quarter one independent learning plan. And we encourage students to choose, um, of course, their personal learning goal. So which aspect of the English language do they want to improve in the first quarter of the semester? And you can see a wide variety of responses here. And this um, highlights the, how difficult it can be for a, a class teacher to provide guidance and feedback when you have a, a range of student, um, students' fo foci for their study plans. And um, yeah, okay, we could go to the next slide. Um, and the next question asks um, how effective the website was for their personal learning goal. So um, you can see that the vast, or well, the majority of students found it effective. And actually only four students replied, no, it, it what didn't help them at all. They're sure it didn't. Um, but again, um, we, we're going to let students use it more, and it, it might be hard for them to judge the effectiveness, the effectiveness of it, after only a few weeks. Um, okay. And the next question. Um, so we have right now a total of forty nine LLS language learning strategies on the website. And we just wanted to see which of those LLS did students find um, useful or helpful. And surprisingly, at least one student found each of them useful. Um, um, but some of them were, of course, more useful than others. Again, the, the, the highest is the benchmark test practice. And that, as Ben mentioned, is the standardized assessment that is mandatory in our courses and students um, it's worth like a significant portion of their grade. So they want to get a high score. But also, um, it was somewhat surprising that, to me at least, that the reading strategies were um, higher than something like the speaking strategies. But again, this is only after a few weeks. And, um, and there's a, on the far right, you'll see using Netflix, which a lot of students love to use as a resource. And, um, Net, LLN is um, learning language with Netflix, and it's a great new resource that Netflix has um, so that um, these strategies can be effective. Oh, sorry. And on the very bottom, you see RWL. So that's reading, writing, listening, speaking, grammar, vocabulary. And there are a number of strategies for each skill. And um, we, will, we will probably add more strategies 
going forward. For example, if students don't really like most of the grammar strategies, we will try to improve them or make some new ones. Okay, and the next question, um, we wanted to see um, if students felt confident that they had new ways to autonomously study English. And the vast majority said yes, they felt that now they have new ways to study English on their own. Um, so that was some positive news for us. And the next question we asked was, um, <clears throat> when they're done with their required English classes at APU, there are, our students are actually left to their own devices on whether or not they want to continue their English education. Of course, we do have resources available to them, like the Self-Access Learning Center, but some students um, might be done with English for a while because they just got through the hard courses. But we asked them, would they use a site again on their own when they didn't have to do it for any classes? And again, um, the majority said, yes, they will try to use it again. So that was some good news for us. And we asked one more question and it was, um, would students recommend this to their peers basically? So if they have a friend who's also trying to learn English on their own, would they recommend it? And a very high number said, yes, they would recommend it, which is great news because again, we do not wanna rely on teachers only to promote the website to students. Okay, but the survey did have some limitations, of course. Um, again, use of the LLS website was not required. So we, we would like to um, have more replies from um, a, a greater number of students going forward. And students only had a few weeks to use the website. So it might be hard for them to judge how effective it was for their personal independent learning goals so far. And we did have some open-ended questions at the end of the survey because we wanted to elicit students' ideas for how we could improve the website. But unfortunately, we got comments like, nothing, it's great. So um, we're gonna try to get some more qualitative feedback that we can use in the future from both students and teachers through a series of surveys and interviews. Finally, where will we go from here? Well, at our university, um, of course we wanna increase students intrinsic motivation number one we want them to become lifelong learners of english and hopefully this website can help them because they can find strategies to study the areas of english that they want to improve in the future but we could increase their extrinsic motivation just by making them use the website so perhaps some homework assignments or even a small part of their course grade could be based on trying some strategies until they find one that they like um, and we, we would like um, all of our English courses, we'd like to um, at least have students try the website out to see how they could use it in those courses. And to help do that, perhaps we could link level assessments with particular learning strategies. For example, if a student wants to, um, or let's say there's a speaking test coming up, well, the teacher can say, oh, well, you should try the learning strategy for speaking, learning strategy seven. And then maybe that strategy would really help prepare them for a certain assessment at our institution. So that could be helpful for students. And finally, yeah, we wanna find new ways to promote the website um, within our university. But of course, as Ben mentioned, this is a free website. So we would like to share it with you and you can share it with your students or your peers, however you see fit. Um, and if you see any areas for improvement or ideas you might have, please share them with us and um, we'll be happy to keep improving the website for everyone. So thank you so much. We have a few minutes left. Um, if anyone has any questions, we would like to help try to answer them now. And again, thank, thank you so much for listening today. So questions can be posted in chat or please, yeah, raise your hand. Thank you so much. It, yeah, sorry, I had a quick question. Um, yeah, I think it's a really great idea. And like we've been looking at some way to um, provide, you know, quickly actionable, like replicable strategies or, or, or study plans for our plans that our students can and can implement too. I just had a question about whether there was any sort of um, scaffolding or support in terms of like getting students, helping students to choose uh, strategies which were appropriate for like the specific targets or goals they're trying to achieve because like you know for like my students the students i work with 
sometimes they'll choose a strategy which, which looks good or like sounds good, like, you know, they've, you know, or something they've heard of, like they've heard of uh, shadowing before, like they know the word shadowing, but they actually they're trying to improve, you know, their, their vocabulary and their listening. And that, that might, you know, shadowing can be good for some things, but vocabulary acquisition is not really one of them. So I was wondering if there's any kind of support in that sense. Mm, that's a I, great question. Ben, you, you could go ahead and answer. Sure. I, I mean, so as I as we were talking about, this is kind of a first iteration of the website and its integration into the levels at the university. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the strategies that we want to use is have this be a big part of the self access learning center. So um, peer advisors in the in the center can what students will come there with an issue, a, strat, uh, a skill they want to increase or improve, and the we want to train the peer advisors at the uh, self-access learning center, how to use the website and how to actually suggest students for strategies that will help align with the skill they want to improve. So that's one thing we want to do. Uh, anyone else want to chip in for other suggestions for how to help scaffold students for using the site? I think that Tomoko in elementary, they have some workshops that they help train students to look at the LLSs and which might be appropriate at that, you know, that initial level, right? Is that right, Tomoko? Right, I think so. So especially lower level student needs um, more teacher support to you to learn about how to use LLS. So probably for a lower level student, probably teacher led workshop or such kind of opportunity is beneficial. And for the upper level student, probably uh, more independent, more learner centered activities will be. Um, preferred and which can be just in uh, which can be consistent with um, the important steps of language learner strategy instruction. So that can be implicit instruction. Uh, very quickly to answer your question regarding the website in particular, no, not yet. But yeah, you hear our grand ideas for the future. Um, are we out of time? I, I, don't, I don't know how, I'm not sure how that works, but I, was there any other question? I, I may or? know less to leave if it's still open. Yeah. <laughs> any other questions? No question, but thank you so much. I'm so grateful for joining this uh, presentation because my research field is self-regulated learning and uh, within that vocabulary, but self-regulation is what I'm interested in. And it's great to know that there is a team working on like making strategies available for students. Thank you. I'm so happy. <laughs> thank you so much, Serene. That's a sweet comment. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Oh, and Ben, did you want to mention on the website? Can they actually leave a comment that that we'd see? Uh, uh yes. You can you can post a comment under each strategy. It's because the strategies are actually listed in a it's a blog post. So you can actually leave a comment there um under each strategy that you click on on the website. Yep, you can do that. Or students, I would recommend students doing that, not me or not teachers, but yeah. Okay, thank you, Rutas, Tomoko, Matt, Ben, Michael, and Kiki for your presentation. And thank you all for coming. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much.